Good evening everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about pets in general. When adopting a pet from a store, in particular a large chain, you may encounter various issues such as underlying health problems due to poor breeding practices, insufficient socialization, and behavioral challenges stemming from inadequate care. There are some family-owned pet stores that may also encounter these issues but are not limited to Animals from such environments might show signs of stress or anxiety that require extra time and patience to adjust to their new home. It is crucial to do thorough research in con and consider adopting from reputable shelters or rescues to ensure a healthier and happier pet. In 2015, I made that mistake. My family and I purchased a kitten from a family-run local pet store. Upon purchase, we were informed that Una was an eight-week-old female. They sold us a $50 bag of kitten food claiming that she ate that food all the time. When we arrived home, we noticed in the first 12 hours that she wasn't eating anything or let alone drinking. She was very lethargic, her fur was standing up, and she just looked very unwell. So the next day we took her to the vet and lo and behold the vet told us that Luna looked to be no more than four to five weeks old at the most. She was taken away from her mama way too soon. The vet instructed us to give her KMR which is kitten, re kitten milk replacer. So I did that around the clock but it just wasn't enough. Luna had contracted some form of untreatable virus and got worse and worse each day. 12 days after purchase, Luna crossed the Rainbow Bridge, right beside me on the couch. My family and I, we were devastated. This happened around Christmas time. So after the holidays were over, we returned back to that pet, that pet store to share our experience with the, with the owner and ask for a refund on the kitten food not even asking for a refund on the purchase of the animal that is now deceased that we had to bury but just a refund for the kitten food and the store owner refused claiming they only have a 12-hour return policy on all items including living animals these animals are nothing but an item on the shelf to them but i didn't just let that sit and move on I made a post about them on my local Facebook group. I, with the help of others in the community, gathered up enough signatures to protest in the middle of winter in minus 40 degree weather. We contacted newspaper reporters, television reporters, and we told our stories. We contacted bylaw and the SPCA. Unfortunately, they didn't shut the store down, but they did pass a law that the pet stores were no longer allowed to sell cats or dogs. Unless they are working and affiliated with the local SPCA, they were not permitted to sell dogs or cats. Now, while that is just a start, it's not what I wanted. I wanted all animals prohibited from being sold in stores. It is a start. To spread awareness of how terrible conditions are, I continue to spread word of my situation to everyone I meet and now to the world. Javia Pet Store, where I live, is not a good place. So this brings me now to my one of my friend's most recent experience. A friend recently went to a pet shop local to her called Fish and Stuff and adopted a guinea pig named Cloud. Upon arriving home, within the first few days, she knew something wasn't right. So off to the emergency vet she went. Let's hear from her. Guinea pig people, uh, MSS heard here. Uh, it's been a rough uh, few days. Um, last night I had to take Cloud to the emergency vet. 
Uh, he wasn't eating. He hasn't been eating since he got here. I've been giving him critical care, pumping him full of that. Uh, got an x-ray done, and his molars are overgrown. Uh, it's gonna be between 400 and $500 to get them trimmed back, and that's before medication or anything else he might need. Uh, I maxed out my credit card taking him to the emergency vet, but I'm not worried about the money. Uh, I'm worried about getting money together to get his teeth, to his teeth trimmed. Uh, but I do have a fundraiser up on my community wall. Uh, if you want to help, that would be great. Anybody who doesn't know Cloud's story, well, I'm here to tell you it now. I went into a pet store the other day. Because I wanted to see if they had any guinea pig stuff, because my local store doesn't really have much. Sorry, if you hear my dog snoring in the background, she is conked out. Uh, anyways, I went to this pet store. Uh, the first thing that greeted me was a face full of an ammonia smell. And just straight cat urine. That's all it was. Saw cats wandering around. Uh, one had a very bad infection in its eye. Saw the guinea pigs in tiny little cages. Just clumped together, boys and girls. Pregnant guinea pigs. Pregnant guinea pigs with open wounds. A pregnant female that looked like she had bumble foot. Uh, no hay. No pellets. All looked severely underweight. Uh, saw Cloud. I immediately connected with him. Asked to hold him. The lady took him out. And she held him so tightly when she took him out that he squealed in pain. She handed him to me, and I knew from that moment I could not take him home with me. I had to get him out of that situation, and I had to do something. So I took him home, and I wrote an email to the Humane Society, and my local, uh... What's the word? My local... Oh, God. I can't think of the word right now. Uh, anyways, I notified the property, proper authorities. And, yeah. That's where we're at with Cloud right now. I believe the reason his teeth are in the shape they're in is the lack of hay and proper nutrition and food. So I'm going to do my best to fix this and give him his best shot. He deserves a second shot at life. He was not dealt a fair hand and I will find a way to help him through this. So it's time for an update on Cloud. He's active as you can see. We're getting ready to do meds and critical care. He, I took him to the vet yesterday and she said she didn't see any problem with his teeth. However, she thinks he might have worms. So we are waiting for the test result to come back on that. And then we will go from there. But he's still here, still fighting. Big boy. Isn't that my baby? It is extremely important that when you bring any new pet coming from a pet shop, I really recommend seeking an experienced vet that has knowledge in that species as soon as possible to rule out medical illness because it's unfortunate to say that a lot of pet stores that still do sell animals 
they're they're being sold pregnant, missexed, sick, have inadequate diets, not socialized, and it's a really sad situation that is happening worldwide. We all need to spread awareness of our experiences and situations. We need to protest and make it so that all pet stores no longer sell living animals. It is also extremely, extremely important to be aware that if you are purchasing or adopting an animal through a pet store, that you have sufficient funds for emergency medical care because you just never know if the animal is going to be sick or not. Now, I understand life happens and sometimes you might be in between paychecks and it's not okay for someone to be berated because of a situation like that. However, it's crucial to understand that having an emergency vet fund or having pet insurance set up, it can make a world of a difference on the animal as well as your own stress levels. So I want to thank you all for listening to our stories and for watching this video. And if you've ever experienced anything like this, feel free to share that experience with us in the comments. Feel free to share this video. If you want to see any further content, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell, like the video. It all helps the algorithm. And I will see you all next time. Thank you so much. Love ya.